this is going to be a very special episode of Success Unleashed. And if I'm being truthful with you, I'm probably more nervous about this episode than any interview I'll, I have done or will do throughout the course of this video series and this podcast. Because the reason this is such a special episode is because this this week I had a, a, a very, very dear member of the family pass away. Um, this past Sunday, my grandfather, who, who was the patriarch of our family, who was kind of the foundation that our family was built on, uh, he passed away. And, you know, as, as we're recording this on this Friday, the funeral services were yesterday. So this is all, this is also very fresh, um, not only in my mind, but emotionally as well. And I thought as I was, as I was thinking about the whole situation and what we were going to do for a show this week, the, the thing that kind of came to my mind is that I was very blessed. And I was very fortunate to have a man like this in my life and to to kind of help guide me and help mold me into the person that I ultimately became. And as I was as I was appreciating that blessing that I had, I also became very aware that there's a lot of people in this world that that don't have that same positive male influence. And especially in this current climate where where masculinity is getting overshadowed and getting and, and getting put down like a a masculine male role model is is something to be appreciative of. Uh, so what I thought we would do on this episode is is I would take some of the lessons that I've learned from Pop and and just kind of share them with you in hopes that not only you know, to to share the impacts that he's had on my life, but ultimately that some of those same lessons that he taught me may be something that you can implement into your life and allow you to allow you to grow in your success as well. And, you know, it, it's very important to, to understand that, that with Pop, he was a very tough man. He, he grew up on a farm. Um, you know, he, he didn't come from a wealthy background. But again, like we talk about a lot, that doesn't necessarily mean that he wasn't successful because success isn't, it isn't measured solely on the amount of money that you have in your bank account at the end of the day. What success is measured on at least in my opinion, is is the impact on people's lives that you're going to be able to have. And when I think about when I think about Pop and I think about his legacy and what he meant to me, what he meant to this family and so many countless others, you know, as we were as we were at his funeral services and seeing all the lives that he impacted, it really kind of puts a different lens on what it means to be successful. And and with Pop, he wasn't necessarily somebody that he wasn't necessarily somebody that like taught you lessons by sitting down and talking to you and saying, hey, this is the lesson that I'm trying to teach you. This is what you need to understand. Most of his most of his lessons were actually taught by that right there, by being the example and you know, potentially subconsciously without even realizing it. That's why I gravitate towards that phrase so much and, and try to implement it in my life is because you know, one of the biggest male role models that I had in my life was a man that lived that way. These these lessons that I'm going to discuss with you uh, that I learned from him aren't things that he sat down and told me. It's things that just, especially now that he's gone, looking back at his life and looking about the, looking back at the interactions that we had and and the the memories that we have together. It's it's I'm drawing these lessons out of who he was as a person not necessarily that he tried to frame them to me in the in the manner of a lesson. And you know, he he was a man that without question was was unbelievably prideful. And that has a lot of negative connotation around it these days, but the truth is is that Pop wasn't prideful in and of himself. He was prideful of his family and the people that he that he had a relationship with. You would hear this man brag all the time, but he never bro- bragged on himself. He bragged on his kids, on his grandkids, on his great grandkids. You know, I can't tell you how many members of the family that I don't see a whole lot anymore came up to me and felt like they knew my my daughter because of everything that Papa told him. Um, so, like, it's okay to be prideful, but you know, having pride in others and and lifting others up is is a way that in life we can we can reach new heights and we can we can be appreciative of of the impacts that people have on our lives or or just the the joy that they bring into their lives because you know after my grandmother my my papa's wife passed away about eight and a half years ago you know realistically we we didn't really expect that pops was going to stay around that much longer after that because and and i'll get to this later on in one of his lessons but when I tell you Pop loved his wife, I, I mean he loved his wife. And to to think about 
him sticking around and, and why he was able to stay around so much longer after he did, it's it's without question his his kids, his grandkids, and his great grandkids that he had a, a remarkable relationship with. And, you know, that pride that he had in all of them and, and that pride for his family was was just a testament to the love that he had for all of us. Like I can't tell you how many times you know, we would be talking about me playing college baseball or something and the one thing he would resort back to was, yeah, well, I'm telling you, you know, my my youngest, he he had everything. If he'd have had his grade his grades right, he'd have been playing in the big leagues and you could just see the joy and the love that he had for everybody in his family and the stories that he would tell um you know about everybody in their past the the past experiences that we had with him. And that's that's kind of a big part of who Pop was. He was he was the most selfless, like caring for others, like humble person in terms of his achievements that you would ever meet. Like, I mean, to to go from you know, growing up and shooting rabbits and squirrels to provide protein for you and your siblings, your your granny and grandpa, like that was how he grew up and to to accomplish you know, what he had and given from a financial standpoint, he wasn't the wealthiest or most successful man in, in those metrics. But in terms of the family he built, he was one of the most successful men that you'll ever meet. He was an incredible, incredible person and he loved his family dearly. And it's, yeah, you know, when you sit back and, and, and in the moment, you don't realize how impactful all of this stuff is on you. But, you know, when he's gone and you're, and you're flipping through old photo albums and you're, you know, you're trying to understand um, the impact that that he had on your life. You you really start to realize the the love that he had for his family, absolutely defines who he was. He, you know, I, I don't think there's a member of our family that at one point or a time or another didn't have to have him co-sign on a loan for him or something like that. And he was happy to do it because it meant that he was helping. Um, you know, he was most certainly, you know, we talk about love languages and, and my marriage a lot and gifts were far and away his love language. I mean, anytime he would come to the house, even if it was something small, um, he would come to the house and, Hey, let's go get these girls a milkshake, you know, talking about my daughters and you know, I, or my daughters and my son, um, let's go get these kids a milkshake. And, you know, we would go and obviously like I'm, I'm successful, like buying milkshakes for the kids is, is nothing now. So yeah, I would, I'll pop, I, I've got it. Don't worry about it. But he would be super insistent on the fact that he wanted to buy them those milkshakes because again, like he just, he just gave with everything he had, whether it was his time, his energy, his, you know, his mental capacity, his finances, he was truly a really, really giving man. And you know, as I think back about him, the the experiences that I had and the example that he set for me, you know, I, I had a great father. I had a great grandfather or an awesome grandfather on the, the other side of my family. Um, so not taking anything away from any of those people, but Pop was just, he was a huge impact on my life. And I, I think anybody that had met the man or knew the man would say that he had a huge impact on their life as well. You know, at the at the funeral services they were talking, they said to, if you knew Pop, you knew he was a good man. If you knew him, if you knew him well, you knew he was a great man. And if you were a part of his family, you knew that he was irreplaceable. And those words ring in my head because they are, they are so true. Like the, the impact that this man has had on so many lives, um, again, not from a, an influencer standpoint, not from a, um, you know, being famous type standpoint, but just the people that he interacted with daily, the impact that he had on their lives is, is absolutely um, is absolutely something something that I strive to accomplish one day. You know, thinking about thinking about all the all the family that was there and the stories that they were telling about him, it just it warms my heart because you know, a, a big part of how I knew Pop growing up was that he was this tough man. Um, he was a hard worker, and he demanded everything you had out of you. you know, he taught us all how to fish. He taught us all how to play ball. And, you know, when we were playing ball, like if you, if you tried to sidestep a ball when he was coaching you, the next ball was getting hit a hundred miles an hour at you. And he, he did get a little softer in his old age. Um, but I, I, I mean, I was told stories of when my uncles were growing up, his kids growing up, 
um, if they tried to catch a ball off to the side instead of instead of getting in front of the ground ball like they were supposed to, man, he would put them in catcher's gear and just being ball after ball after ball after ball at them, beating them up like crazy just to toughen them up and make them realize you don't have to be afraid of the ball. Um, you know, he was he was this man that just he he exemplified hard work. He exemplified perseverance and and never giving up on yourself, always pushing yourself to the next level. And again, this wasn't something that he necessarily verbalized to any of us, but it was something that if you paid attention to him and if you if you watched him, you understood that's who he was. Um, he was just one of the toughest men you'll ever meet. Like if he was outside doing yard work, you know, as he started to get older and his his skin started to get frail, if he was outside trimming hedges. You know, he would come in and just have blood pouring from his arms where thorns thorns had scratched him like crazy and the blood was pouring down. He wouldn't even want a Band-Aid. Like, he was just, when you think of a man's man, Pop was a man's man. Um, but but ultimately, the, the biggest lesson um, and the most impactful lesson that I think Pop ever taught was one that he wasn't trying to teach, that he wasn't trying to be an example of, it was just one that he was that he embodied. Um, so growing up, growing up, I always remember Pop having a a, a wild streak in him. Um, you know, and I'm not going to get into all the details, but Pop wasn't always he wasn't always the best Christian husband, the best Christian man, and it wasn't like affairs or anything like that. Um, he was just, I mean, he was a tough man that grew up a long time ago, and you know, he had a wild streak in him. But I remember. I remember when we started going to church um, and we got involved and Pop had given his life to the Lord, there was a change in this man that, that without knowing him, I cannot put into context how big of a 180 this life, this man's life did. I mean, he went from, you know, going to hang out in pool halls and gambling to his wife was everything to him. And he always loved her. I don't, again, you would have to understand the complete context to understand how big of a deal this is. But when I tell you this man changed who he was at, I don't know, 40, 50 years old, whatever it was, I mean, this man changed who he was. His wife became the center of everything to him. He was never a publicly affectionate man. And I remember distinctly, um, I can't remember how old I was, but our, our families always enjoyed taking a cruise as like a family vacation. Um, and every other year or so, we would, you know, we go on these cruises. And I remember one time that we were in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And again, this is at a time where Pop had never really been openly affectionate in public. Um, the holding hands, the hugging, the kisses, that those just weren't things that, those weren't things that you saw out of Pop. Um, he was a very much a tough love kind of guy. And we we're walking in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and you know, Pop was, I don't know, 25, 50 yards ahead of me, whatever it was, and he was walking side by side with Mama. And as a as a young teenage kid, I look up there and see him initiate, reach over and grab Mama's hand as they're as they're walking down the beach together. And y'all, when I tell you that that showed me that no matter where you're at in life, no matter who you are no matter what you've done, no matter what your past is, you can make a change. Um, and I think that lesson, you know, beyond Christianity, beyond um, beyond marriage, beyond relationship, I think that oversounding message can mean so much to this world. Because I think all too often people, and potentially some of you that are even listening to this right now, I think all too often people feel like they're trapped in their current circumstances. They feel like they're you know, they didn't take the entrepreneur ride, or they, or they didn't, they didn't set themselves up to be, um, you know, somebody that they're striving to be, and they made these decisions, and now that their life path is just kind of set in stone. But if if Pop taught me anything, and he taught me a lot, the biggest message is is that you can always change, you can always, you can always become a better person, you can always strive and and work to become a better version of yourself, and. You know, I think if, as I was thinking, you know, with this going on and, and you know, all the tears that have been shed and all the all the stories that have been exchanged about Pop over the last, you know, week or so as we've been kind of dealing with this loss in our family is, 
you know, legacy is important. Your name is important. And David Ellison will always be remembered in, in our families as, as the patriarch, the man who, who kind of set the tone for maybe not financially, but uh, emotionally who we should all be as men in this family and women in this family as well. Um, but legacy, legacy is an important thing. And, you know, even, you know, talking about this, this, this message isn't going to be his legacy. His legacy is going to be is going to be the the way that people carry on these traditions, that the way these people carry on the things that they've learned from him, and and continue to expand on that and grow. And you know, so for for me, I just felt I felt it was important to to kind of have this conversation. And as I'm telling you guys this, like I'm I'm honestly probably making this video more for my kids than I am to put out as a podcast or to put out as a video because I want I want the future generations to understand the impact this man had. Um, but again, I just, with with everything, with the blessing that I had of him being in my life from the time I was born until, um, until a week ago now, I, I was beyond blessed to have such a, a positive male role model. And I wanted... I, I don't know. I just wanted to share with you some of the things that that I've learned from him and some of the impacts it's had on my life and in truth and hopes that that maybe something that you know I've said here kind of sparks something in you and and helps you have a pseudo uh, a, a standing grandpa that maybe you never had or that positive male role model that you never had that like some of these lessons can be taken to heart and you know we can continue to expand on his legacy because for me. I know this video does nothing. It's it's how I go moving forward and how I conduct my life it is what's going to determine the legacy of that man. And not just me, obviously, everybody in our entire family and everybody of the lives he's impacted. Um, but that's what legacy means to me. It's It's the people that you've impacted and the people that they can continue to impact through your lessons and your teachings. And so I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, I know it's a it's a very different episode than you're accustomed to seeing out of the show, and you'll probably see it in the future. But it was an important message that I felt like I wanted to get out. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And um, I don't know. I hope I had an impact on you.